Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and welcome back to the Space Objects tutorial series. So now that we've already covered nebula and planetary surface craters, if you haven't seen those videos, there's a link in the description box below, or they're just in the playlist you're watching currently. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the further away planets, so gas giants, Earth-like worlds, big rocky worlds, icy bodies, all that fun stuff. And here's the trick, we're using paint and a brush, not spray paint. So for today's project, we're going to be working, rather than on canvas, what we've been doing the past uh, few weeks in the rest of these tutorials, uh, I'll be working on the, the piece of prepared corrugated cardboard that I made earlier on. Uh, for this, uh, mostly because for the two small canvas paintings I'm doing, I just want to focus on the planets and I can't do like six planets in one piece, at least not with what I've got planned elsewhere compositionally. So I figured for this it would be easier just to do it on a piece of cardboard. Now again, prepared corrugated cardboard. If you guys missed the introduction to this series, I is going to be very, very similar to a smooth uh, textured canvas. So pretty simple here. Did my initial layer of black gesso with my base color of mixes of a red, a blue, and a black for that, that night sky color. And then uh, threw some stars in over top. Now when it comes to doing planets, planets are super fun to do in general, uh, much like uh, the rest of the space objects, also very super fun to do. Uh, now something that I always do to start, and it's, I wouldn't say it's strictly required, but it's definitely a good idea, is to lay out some circles. So for this, I actually have a, my circle templates. Uh, you can find these in your local arts and crafts store. You can uh, usually find them with the drawing materials or drafting materials, so pens, pencils, and you're going to find erasers. And you might find some circle templates there as well. Uh, this is a much older plasticky one. It's got a nice crack in it. Uh, this particular one from uh, Picket uh, is uh, really quite nice. It has little beads on the back of it, and you can slide it around and do all those different shapes with that. So I'm actually going to grab a couple of different things uh, a lot of times, especially when I'm working on a big canvas piece, this circle just isn't quite big enough. So I end up looking around my studio for just other things that are round. That's really a great way to do it. If you don't have a circle template, just look around for things that are round. Lids are really great. Roll the tape, you know, something of that nature. Um, I have a rather large uh, bucket of gesso. So uh, at least my empty ones, I will use this for much larger circular objects uh, periodically in my work. Uh, but I would say between, between lids, rolls of tape, and, and various, various buckets and things you might have sitting around the house, good, uh, good rule of thumb for pa uh, painting different planets and things like that. But for today, we're just going to go ahead and use the circle template. Now, as mentioned in the previous part when we were doing canvas craters, uh, I use paint marker for a lot of my outline stuff, but if you don't have that, you can use a, uh, a white pencil, specifically a chalk pencil. So pastel pencil or white charcoal. Now I had been using the paint marker, but I think I will set it aside for this particular tutorial in order to show you guys with the uh, white pencil itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and just start laying in some planets over here. Uh, one there, a smaller one up here. Half sizer down this side. And you know what? Let's go ahead and use a roll of tape for one as well. Let's see what I have here. Just some masking tape. That'll work. Make sure I don't uh, bump anything. You no. Know let's do an overlap as well. I haven't done an overlap for a, for a planet in a while. Okay, so that one will just overlap this one, about like that. Now, considering that uh, for most types of painting, uh, you need to establish a light source, so we're going to go ahead and do that here as well. So, I'll keep things relatively simple, I suppose, and put that, put a star in, like right, maybe, maybe right here. Or something like that. Extra big, extra big star. Actually, for that, I think I will grab my paint marker. 
just to keep things a little easier for me personally. I'm just going to trace that line and like that. Okay, we're going to call that our sun. Maybe I'll come in with some spray paint later and diffuse that light, but not really what we're worried about right this second. Okay, so to start things out, uh, for any planetary structure, I like to essentially gesso it or paint it as, a, uh, it, as if I was gessoing it for a, uh, a regular other, other painting, other piece. Now, you're going to need a brush. I recommend something soft bristled, as I have been working with. I'm actually going to grab a round brush for this. I'm going to dump that dunk that in my water. I have some paint sitting out from uh, the previous tutorials in this series. I'm just going to go straight into my white right now. Regular titanium white. And basically just, you know, lay out a... Uh, wow, that's really sticking out funny, isn't it? There we go. Okay, that hair is going to be a problem. <laughs> Trim that off. All right. So really I'm just laying down that base co color. Uh, for the bulk of the planet, I'm just going to come right up to the edge of that line. I'm not going to touch it yet. But establishing, you know, general idea here. We'll do the same on the other planets. And you don't necessarily have to use white but I do find that if you're going to be using some brighter colors, the white is uh, almost essential to making a planet that does feel a bit more, I don't know, interesting. Uh, if you're doing like an Earth-like world in particular, you want, you know, that you want your, white, your whites, your blues, and greens to show up um, and to show up quite well. So I do find that... Uh, Using the white is generally the better thing to do. Now, because I have an overlapped planet, I'm probably going to go for a gray over top of this one just so I can see those shapes uh, distinctly. But other than that, that's all I'm really doing. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to work on, on your, your lines and your shapes uh, with the white. But I will say, uh, as an initial layer, if you already know what you're doing with the planet, I have no idea what I'm doing with any of these yet, um, then uh, pre-establishing brush strokes, like maybe side to side like that, uh, for streaky lines, for that underlying texture to where you want maybe those lines for a gas giant to be, absolutely worth doing. Earth-like worlds, can, you can probably tap a little bit more, get more texture in them. Rocky worlds, similar, similar as well. I'm going to do the gray one last. So for this, actually I have to tape down, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to need to do two things. One, I normally stand, so I'm going to sit for this. So, start on this side. And again, similar to part three, if you saw that, uh, when I do any kind of detail precision work, start further back than where you really want to start that. So if I have paint out to the edge, I'll start and not here. I'll start where I've already painted and keep pulling in that direction. Additionally, for any kind of line work, this is the same for drawing as well as painting. Uh, don't look where your brush is, look at where it's going. This will help you considerably in making more accurate lines. You don't necessarily have to use a round brush, but I find round shape, round brush, makes things easier. And remember, you can always go a little further, but you can't take back uh, the shape beyond where you already put it. So, obviously, that would be a problem. And as I work, as I pull this paint, you, you might be able to see it. I uh, will kind of create a little bit of a bead as I'm pulling that paint on the edge of the brush. And that's a good thing. That's, I, I want to be able to drag that paint across that line rather than having to uh, come back and have to re-blend it some, some other way. And we'll do the same thing when we paint the uh, structure of the planet to the center push out, uh, at least for the most part. And again here, starting where I already painted and then slowly dragging it. I am periodically dipping in my water to keep my paint smooth and workable here. You could use a, a, something other than a heavy body paint, so like a, a, like a soft body or liquid w w works really well as well. I do note that a much thinner paint, such as a Golden High Flow, 
will have a, a bloom and a, and a bleed effect. It tends to run, so getting this thick edge won't be actually as easy, which is why I tend to prefer thinning the heavy body rather than using just a lower viscosity paint. And technically, in theory, you don't necessarily want to go all the way to the edge immediately. You can always do that little bit more of an edge in that, that glow. And if we're doing uh, at least two of these, I probably want to throw a little bit of a, um, a halo around that edge to indicate um, atmosphere. So that is something that uh, you, you do kind of want to note as you work. Um, so that initial gesso layer doesn't necessarily have to go all the way to the edge, but it should be should be pretty close. And you could, again, don't have to use white paint. You could just use, use a gesso. But um, considering I already painted the, the sky back, I feel like using gesso over top of this would be uh, a little um, strange, at least personally. Trying to keep it centered, but I, I have to rotate it, so it's, it's just it's harder. Okay. So that is the first of those to be fully completed and round or round enough. I'm actually just going to toss the rest of these into time lapse. Okay, so I decided to throw in a glare spot for my son as well as zoom out a bit so you guys can see uh, both the whole piece as well as uh, my colors on the palette as well. Mind the tripod legs, there's really not much I can do about that, uh, at least for this particular uh, session here. So uh, for this one, I'm sticking mostly with my primaries with a slight offset because I'm using two different blues. So as I've been using so far in this tutorial, uh, series have been Cad Red Medium, Cad Yellow Medium, and Prussian Blue Hue. I've also added, added the uh, addition of some cerulean blue chromium. This is primarily to do more work with uh, oceans and seas. I also will be periodically grabbing my white and my black as I've, been, I've had previously, as well as uh, some of the initial base brownish gray color that I made when I was doing uh, the previous uh, tutorial. If you'd like to see what all goes into that color, it's basically the primaries plus black and white, but if you want to see that being made, you can go check out part three as well if you haven't already. I'll go ahead and lay that white down. So I'm thinking that the Earth-like world should probably be the smallest and furthest one away, and in technically speaking, closest to that sun makes the most sense, uh, astronomically speaking. Uh, so for the other ones, I'm going to stick with probably more rocky bodies and gas giants. So for I think this first one, I'm going to actually go with something that's closer to that initial color with um, the brown. Who knows, maybe, the, the, maybe this planet is actually the one that we were uh, painting last week, but instead of being, you know, facing the nebula, it's facing out towards the other side. Continuity sometimes, you know, it's a, it's a thing. I'm just going to start laying in this color. When I get up to the edge, I'll pull back a little bit lighter with my strokes and just kind of wiggle back and forth. One thing that is nice about getting the lines done with the white layer is it's a lot easier to figure out how far up to paint.
Although for this, the, the overlapping edge here, I will have to do a, another tighter pass for that upper planet. So I'm just going to start kind of with the, that base color, and then we'll blend some stuff in over top of it. Also back to standing again. But we'll likely be rotating a bit. as I did before. Hard to paint cir big circular objects without actually rotating your work surface. And this is where it comes to working on a flat surface to be way easier than trying to do this upright on, a, on an easel. little bit of finessing down in here, but not terribly so. So with big cratery or ucky worlds, you can kind of just smatter some, some color down. I'm going to grab a little black and a little blue. Black and blue and white all over. And just kind of mesh them down. Tapping with the brush, but keeping at an angle. Dropping in those shapes. Blend a little bit out, but I'm mostly just kind of tapping and tapping and pulling a little. Okay, it looks alright. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and not touch this for a minute, go into the next one where we're going to come back and forth, because I want to do a little bit more dry brushing with a lighter color over top of that. So our Earth-like world, we're going to need an ocean, or maybe just a water world, who knows. So white, blue, mix my two blues together. A, a phthalo or an ultramarine would uh, probably be good to use other than the mixed blues, but... Uh, I don't have either, so I, d I do the mix just because I feel like it makes a, a more interesting blue. The planets are really about, the, the, the way most things are in acrylic, really about a lot of layers. Although gas giants, you can kind of you can kind of do in one pass. Which you'll see as we do the other two. Although this close one might be fun to do more of like a, a reddish uh, Martian kind of surface. Actually, I'll do, I'll do that with that one. I'll, I'll make the gas giant close though. Okay, initial blue, I'll bring a little green in. For uh, our structures, our, our land masses, if there are any in this world, I like to think that there are on these similar Earth-like planets. So I'll just come in, I'm just going to basically go back and forth with this brush, sticking with the same uh, dirty water as before, sticking with the, the same uh, uh, round brush. Gonna pushing my bristles out so they fan a little bit, kind of like a filbert. And then, boom, throw a couple of big continents in there. And we'll come back in with some white and throw some cloud layers and stuff in there as well. But, you know, just drop some land masses in. Closer to a Pangea here than a than Earth, but that's all right. Something like that. Tilt that a little, you guys are getting the glare. So it's a really basic color here. Nothing uh, too crazy. Uh, we'll have to tilt this a little here. 
Um, sorry about that. I didn't realize I was getting so much glare here. I have not had the glare with any other of these tutorials th so far, so this is a little uncharted territory here. <laughs> All right. So what do we want to do? Uh, red, red planet on this side. So I want to mix up an orange. And then tone it with the... Uh, Tone it with our, our grayish color, grayish brown color from before. It's pretty good. Even uh, get a little black in there. And because we put that white layer down, so we're going to get a lot more of the glazed tones than than that thicker mass tone. So a lot of that orange is going to come through. This one would be fun. We could put like a polar ice cap on the top of that, just just like Mars. And reference pictures, you know, again, NASA's website is just chock full of awesome images that uh, are great for reference. Points of reference for both color as well as um, shapes of different things. But uh, I'm not really focused on that today, just playing with the general idea of all these things. Um, a little more red in there, black, and uh, really make that rusty. Yeah. Again, just kind of dragging back and forth with the brush and tapping a little. Just the whole the whole repertoire of um, brush strokes that you can really do. A little over my edge there. Okay, it's not bad. I'm throwing like a, a, a bigger crater or a volcano or something. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this initial one. It's not quite as dry as I'd like it to be. That's okay. Just dry my brush off and we'll get there. So go into my pure white. Next I'm going to use my gray, grayish white from off to the side here. Yeah, you guys are only seeing the, the colorful half, but I've got all this to work with as well. Darken that a bit. And I'm going to dry brush with this. I'm going to wipe off most of that and come in and just kind of graze across this. Because I'm working on cardboard, I'm getting more bubble shapes. When I was working on regular cotton duck canvas, I'd get more of a that that weave that texture so get less paint than that just kind of dragging with the brush out like that I think feels pretty good feels a little too much like clouds I think I probably could have made that a little bit grayer in fact we totally still can we just I'll mix up some of that initial gray color and just drag that back over. There we go. No need to be fancy, just, you know, drag it around. All right, so the Earth-like world is 
too wet to work with. That polar ice cap though is, seems a little more doable. It's a little bit more paint, but still mostly kind of dry brushing with it. And then start dropping that in. If I, if I notice my paint start to blend a little too much because it's too wet, I'll just grab more paint and lay it on a little thicker. Like so. Actually, that's probably the one thing I can do on the planet is toss in the ice caps for that. Dragging with it a little bit. Okay. Let's work on a gas giant, shall we? So I'm thinking like purpley tones and stuff. Just pretty much whatever I want to, really. Reds, blues. A little bit of white in there. Eh. Looks okay. It's a little grayer than I was thinking, but put some more red in. <laughs> and this, I'm not, rather than tapping, I'm going to go side to side with this and make sure I'm getting these bands. As I get to the top, I'm going to follow that contour. But wide bands in the center. Same on the bottom, follow the contour. It's just wrapping around that circular shape. And the edges, that's where it kind of gets a little trickier with the gas giants because you want to keep those brush strokes moving. Uh, now one thing I will do is I'll still paint the edge as I would but then come back in immediately and just pull that. As long as that's still wet and you can still pull it a little bit, do it. The best thing about the gas giants is if you don't mix up enough color, that's totally fine because they're, they're a lot more freeform. When I'm doing uh, when I'm doing any kind of planetary stuff in my in my work, I tend to go for a gas giant just because they're a little more fun and you can be a little less accurate with them. I am dipping into more water for these, keeping that idea of the loose, the loose gas or, or, the, or the, even the, like the liquidy cloud things that gas giants have, things that slide and move around a bit more as they do. And that's the best thing about paint versus like a drawing medium where you'd have to really kind of finesse those lines. Uh, you can kind of just let the paint flow a bit and it works just fine. Yeah, it's kind of purpley. Again, remember your contours on the top and bottom. I'm just going to start bringing in a bit more white to this. Keep my paint thin. Put in those cloud areas. More sparingly here, you know, keep those streaks, lines apart, make sure you have sections in between where you're not just slapping uh, a bunch of new color on top. Put a storm eye in here, circle, and then kind of trail it up and out. Someone's messaging me. Probably should have silenced my phone for the tutorial. <laughs> I 
Okay. Oh, oh. A little too far. All right. It feels pretty good. Now, God, it's still really wet. Okay, I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm actually going to pull some of this color off just because I really want to do the cloud layer on here. Uh, ideally, before you do any kind of atmosphere or cloud layers, let it dry completely. But I'd like to do this all, in, all at once here. All right, we should be okay. You might get, see a little bit of blurring happening and streaking, but I think we'll be okay. Now for this, I'm actually going to fi finally switch to a different brush. I've got this old filbert in here that is really worn out, uh, really splayed out in different directions, but it's soft. And it's going to be perfect for a little bit of uh, dragging and, and dry brushing here. If you don't have an old brush like this, uh, kind of what I was doing before with the, uh, the round, works with the round, works with the flat. I just like this because it's, it, because it's uh, uh, worn out, it actually is better for this. So I'm going to grab just a bit of the white. I'm actually going to wipe most of that away and just kind of pull that off to the side. Just lightly grazing that and start just kind of swirling some clouds in here. One thing I like to do for um, Earth-like worlds is put like a storm in, like a, like a hurricane or something. Uh, but this is a little bit too small to, uh, of a piece to do that on. So just kind of swirl them up over, where the, up over near the edge of the water, but leaning in towards the uh, uh, planet surface uh, in there, the, the continents, and then a bit up more towards the ice caps. Those kind of storms. And that's why I didn't do a ton of, of detailing work with the planet, because I knew I was coming in with the white uh, over top of that. Give a little bit of an atmosphere to the, the Mars-like planet, although I do want to grab a little bit more of a yellow and an orange to those clouds. really light indications of there being something there. But don't go overboard, you know. Okay. Final little bit here is to put uh, the atmosphere lines around the planet. Now for this, uh, you can do it with a liner brush. Nice and, nice and easy, just kind of paint around that edge and that arc. But this is the one time where I will say that uh, a paint marker goes a long way and uh, it's really, really, really easier to do it that way. So that's why I'm grabbing mine. So I will do it a little bit with, the, with Mars. And if you're, again, if you use the circle template, great thing about this is you just go one size larger. So the Mars, the Mars type planet, oh, that was, okay. So I can't really go one size larger because I used the largest circle. But since I know this is going to be a relatively light line, as the Mars-like planet, if it's going to be Mars-like, it's not going to have a huge atmosphere. So just a little bit, and and right where the it would c capture the glimpse of it, because you don't get the you don't get that edge all the way around the planet. I mean, you can, but generally speaking, it's going to be highlighted by the light source. In this case, our our star. So I'm just going to do real light right there, and from there, I will take that uh, brush I was just using for those clouds and just pull that out a little closer onto the, onto the planet and, and bl blend that down and out, like so. It's not much, but it adds just a little bit of extra detail to it. And that's what I really love with putting in atmospheres. OK, we'll do one on the Earth, a little bit thicker, a little bit larger. Let's see, how big of a planet was that? That was that size, so this can be up here. This is just a titanium white paint marker. We'll go a little further there. Whoop. Taper it to that side. Again, stick almost dip the paint marker in the water. That'd have been bad. And then blend it back out ever so slightly. And 
Now you've got your atmosphere lines. Now, we do need to shadow these planets, but I cannot do that right now, and I literally cannot do that until this is completely dry. So I'm actually going to give this probably about an hour to dry to be sure that we are really, really, really dry. Uh, so for the time being, just sit tight. It'll be a quick cut for you guys, but it'll be a nice, relaxing hour for me. So uh, stick around, and uh, we'll do our shadow lines, and that will be the basis of planets. Okay, so it's actually only been about a half hour now, but uh, because I'm not working on canvas, I'm working cardboard, things do seem to be drying a little bit faster than they might otherwise do so. All right, so we've got our base things. The planets all look nice, but we do need to uh, do our shadow layer, sort of that arc where the planet's darker on one side and lighter on the other, as night and day work and uh, everywhere in the galaxy. Um, again, pay attention to where your light is. That's going to depend on where and the direction of your shadows and as things go. Now, when I'm doing uh, shadows for a, a planet, I'm actually normally using uh, my golden open for it. I will show you this technique. Uh, we'll do that. I'll do it over on uh, the, the Mars planet. Um, but I do want to show you, because I would like to keep these tutorials to be relatively accessible, how to do so just with regular uh, regular paint. So, actually, I would say probably three different methods here. So just with the regular Mars black and, and some water. I'm also going to try do so with uh, some glazing liquid. Glazing liquid tends to be better and easier just because it gives you that, again, that a little bit of extra drying time. Uh, and then we'll just do one with the, uh, the open, which is a bit easier as well. Takes all the, uh, takes all the hard parts out to, to use a more relaxed, uh, slower drying acrylic, but not a big deal. So I'm going to go back to using that uh, uh, beat up filbert uh, for my paint application. And I also want to grab a, uh, this is another fairly beat up brush, but it's a, uh, a softer, you know what, I'm actually going to get a even, no, that's a good one. Uh, a relatively soft brush uh, with a wider spread uh, and something a little bit larger, and that's uh, going to be really quite important for uh, bl blurring and blending out that uh, that black lines. Okay, so the first one I will do is the uh, the Earth-like world actually, because it's up here. It's a little easier, so we're going to just start with just thinning that paint out. Um, I'm not you looking for a whole lot. Of color here, uh, you don't want to. You want to be. You don't want to be super, super dark. Um, almost like a watercolor in terms of uh, your overall viscosity and consistency on the paint. So for this, create a bit of a line here, where our night and day line is going to be. Just follow that edge of the planet. Now for right where it meets, right where that night and day line is, this is where we're going to kind of blur and blend that out. I'm just going to tap with this brush. A little bit of back and forth maybe to get that transition to be a little softer. And actually it's already starting to dry a little bit underneath, which is why it's nice to use a medium or the slower drying acrylic uh, for doing this. But once you get that blurred line, then you can slowly, slowly, slowly add more of that, that black. And especially you want to focus most of it towards the, uh, the back end of that planet. Going over my edge a little here. You, again, you guys are not getting the glare. I totally am, so it's just a little harder to see where I'm painting. Luckily, this is a practice piece, so I'm not actually worried about those, those edges as much. And blur that out. And I'll go in with just a little bit more of the black now. A little heavier on the paint, a little lighter on the water. But the rest of that darker end. We're still, because we're, again, wet, wet the brush and everything, we're still working a little bit more transparent. Which is good, because you don't want it to be, you, you know, you spent time painting that planet, you don't want it to completely disappear. But you do want to shadow it in there for uh, that light. Okay. So I will grab a little glazing liquid, and we'll go ahead and do the uh, this moon-type planet here, as well as our, uh, our gas giant. So the glazing liquid will act a little bit like the water, but keep things a little 
more flowy, a little easier to, to work with. Now, because we're not directly on this plane here, we want this angle to be a little bit more here. So rather than straight up and down, follow the sun, work with perspective. So because it's further away, it's going to obviously not get as much light. Further away from the sun, closer to us. And then that line again. And this is just a dry wash. I'm just tacking with this. I haven't rinsed this yet. Because you really need to be able to pull that paint around without making it too crazy. And, and, and push it, pushing that paint too far. I'm just blurring that out. Now I know some of you could be like, why didn't you just use spray paint for the planets and, and all this would be way easier. It uh, doesn't really work on canvas. Uh, I've tried a lot. It does, it just the texture of the canvas doesn't, is not conducive to doing that. Also spray paint has a certain look and feel to it that honestly, I mean it, it has that look, but it's like you can really easily tell like, oh, you use spray paint. It's a little, uh, it's a little more freeing and a bit more um, yeah, I totally went over that line. Um, I would say it, 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 there's, there's more skill involved to it. That's all I'm really getting at here. Yeah, a little bit darker on the, wet, uh, the second or third pass. This probably only needs a second pass. Just shade that out. Okay, big gas giant. Same deal. Pay attention to the sun, pay attention to where that line is. So this is directly this way, so it's going to be almost more of a this direction. Tap it out. Also, in addition to uh, not using spray paint, especially for the black section, if you remember from earlier, this color on top of my black gesso isn't 100% black. So if I were to use black spray paint or even just spraying the black acrylic that I have with like an airbrush, um, it just it would look really odd because it would be it would stand out. You'd essentially overpaint on top of the stars that are already there. Which isn't exactly the best look. Bit more paint. Darker edge. Out like that. Okay, one more here. And I'm getting out the, uh, the golden open for this. I'm using uh, bone black. It's slightly more transparent than the, uh, the Mars black would be, but it is um, still very matte, which is at least when it dries anyhow, which is uh, a good thing. Again, I don't expect you guys to have uh, the golden opens in your uh, studio, but if you do, cool. Uh, use a black and it's way easier to, to get this transition line. Okay. Half the planet, roughly there, line in. And this I will actually, oh, hello, grab the wrong black. This I'll actually just let that sit in the center as I work the rest of this. Because it's slow drying, I don't even have to worry about that line drying too fast or anything, so just, yeah, just let it go. Additionally, I would say the golden opens can be really good for um, painting the color of the planet itself. Although, do note, uh, if you do that, uh, obviously you'll be waiting a bit longer before you do your shadow upper layers and uh, any kind of dry brushing. Darker in the back. So go ahead and grab just some of our regular heavy body black here as well. 
mix that in for the darker section. And then again, blur it out. Because of the slow drying nature of this, it's a little bit easier. You can get a, it, I, I find that you can get a, a easier, finer transition by using the open. Like so. And there's one more thing we need to do here. I have a big gas giant, it needs planetary rings, right? And planetary rings is actually going to be the uh, biggest uh, jump. Uh, we're doing ring, uh, internal rings and asteroid belts in the next tutorial. Uh, but we're not going to be doing the actual outer ring itself. So for this, I'm actually just grabbing some zinc white right out of the tube. Zinc white is a really nice transparent white. Um, uh, like uh, titanium is really good for block it, blocking out those colors, doing the stars, but zinc white being transparent and being that rings tend to be more transparent in nature, then um, yeah, that it, it's just it's just easier. You can use one color, you don't have to mix stuff. Don't even have to worry about glazing liquid or anything like that. I'm going to grab, uh, now this will work with a flat brush, I'm actually grabbing an angle brush, which is a flat brush that's just chopped off to one side. Uh, Grab a little water, just get that paint to flow. And this is one of those ones that will take some practice because uh, it's just a one or two strokes to get these. So, and also like, again, circular motions. I was talking about in uh, the previous tutorial with uh, making craters and making those ellipses. So your four joints of drawing, uh, fingers, wrist, elbow, and shoulder primarily focusing on elbow and shoulder movements here. Start thin. We're going to start thin and then push as we go out and pull it around. And we're just going to do that one side and the other on, on the planet. Like that. Now once you get that shape in, you can come in a little bit more and, and finesse those lines a bit, but they tend to not really need it. Nope. There we go. Got ourselves a nice simple little planetary ring. Now, one thing to note, don't forget, because we uh, established these shadows, this half of the planet, this lower half, where the sun's not hitting it, will be in shadow. Grab the black. Come right across those rings, right here, and darken them, like so. And there we have four different planet types uh, for your next uh, space painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Check me out in part two coming up, or part, wait a minute, this is part four or five, I think now, four, because we did the nebula, if you missed part one. Part one, we took care of the nebula, the planet, and the craters. This, I guess, would be part three then. Um, have the full planetary bodies and systems. And for the next tutorial, again, we're going to be diving into what it would be like to literally be standing inside of an asteroid field uh, or inside the rings of a planet and to see all of those big rocks around you. Uh, for that particular tutorial, I actually already have uh, this planet painted out. So for the rest of this tutorial, uh, enjoy a time lapse of me working on this with a, uh, a flat brush and a bit more extra heavy paint than I was using before. Uh, so this will be the basis of the next tutorial. I hope to see you guys there. This is Ben reminding you to keep on creating, and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.